In this video, I am going to show you one of my favorite tools to use, and that is a brat nailer. Let's do this. I'm Jenny with Roots and Wings Furniture and Home, and today we are going to talk all about a brad nailer. I love this tool because it is so handy, it's really fun to use, uh, and it just makes your process go so much faster. So there are a couple kind of brad nailers that we are going to talk about. One being an air compressor hooked up to a hose that's hooked up to a brad nailer. This is kind of the standard brad nailer system here, and this is how I started, until more recently I found a cordless brad nailer, and this one has just been fantastic. It is much more portable. It's got a little bit of weight to it, but nothing that's not manageable. And then you do not have to lug around an air compressor. You don't have to deal with the noise. You don't have to carry the heavy thing around. You can just use a battery powered one. So two options for you. They work the same. Um, but just know that there is both a cordless and a corded version. All right, the standard size gauge for a brad nailer is usually an 18 gauge. Now, gauges work like this. The higher the number, the smaller diameter the nail. So you can go up, if you went up from this, a 21 or 24 gauge brad nailer would have a really teeny tiny thin nail. Um, almost a pin, a pin nailer that you could hardly see. That would be really useful if you were using it for trim or some kind of really finished product where you don't want to see it. An 18 gauge brad nailer is a little bit thicker of a nail itself, but I find it just fine for most home DIY and building projects. Now, even though the thickness of the nail is the same, um, this particular one can take multiple sizes. So as small as a 5 8 inch brad um, and as long as a 2 inch. Now it will show you on every brad nailer you have your limits in um, what size, but that is perfectly sufficient for anything you are going to need it on. In fact, the nails that I usually have around, I usually keep about a one inch nail, a one and a quarter, and a two inch nail. Uh, and that usually covers just about anything that I need. Here's how it works. There is a trigger mechanism on any nail gun, um, but it does have a safety to it. And that is that this front piece here must be pushed down flush against the wood before you can even activate the trigger at all. So you cannot just go around firing. There is a way to make it work like that. I'm not even gonna show you how to do that. Otherwise you have to press this against the wood um, before you can pull the trigger. So a little bit of safety there. Um, there is also the little wheel here that you can spin to the right or the left and it shows you this indicator here. If you take it this way, what that would be counterclockwise, the nail will go in and sink in a little bit into the wood. Um, if you take it the other way, it will be up a little bit higher. So you would um, just do kind of a test, a test run and see where you need to adjust that to. If you want your nail sticking out a little bit, if you want your nails sunk in so you can fill your nail holes when you're done. So that is a little gauge lever there. The nails go in this compartment here. So when you're ready to fill it, there is usually a little switch. It slides out this way and you can put in your nails. It just slides right along a little track here in the bottom. You push it towards the front, close it up, and you are ready to go. Now you can see this is what prevents it from being too tall. If a two inch nail will take up this whole space and it needs to be a five, in, five eighths is the smallest it could be because it will ride along that lower track there. If you ever get uh, a nail stuck in here or a jam, there is a little lock here that you can open up. It will unlock it and allow you to take out any nails that might be stuck or jammed in there. Um, be sure when you are doing this, you either take the battery out or disconnect the hose. You just don't want anything stuck in there and accidentally you don't want to shoot your finger with a nail. 
If you are using a compressor version, a lot of people get hung up on these two dials here. Let me explain to you what they are. So this one here is the tank pressure. It will tell you as it's filling up with air, how much pressure is built up inside of there. This one, you don't need to worry about too much. The second one down here is a tool pressure gauge. Now, your tool, depending on what tool you're using, will it'll say on there somewhere the right pressure to set it at. This one says here, air pressure 70 to 120 PSI. So that this tool needs that much pressure to work. So as this is pumping up, you are going to adjust this dial here um, till we get to that range somewhere between 70 and 120 PSI. Now you don't want it too full of pressure um, or that can hurt your tool and you can't have it too low or it won't work. So set it right somewhere between there, just using your dial. Um, it will fill up and stop automatically. Once it stops then, that means you are fully pressurized and ready to use your tool. Now this air hose here, hooks in, um, this one hooks in here and that will pump up through the air hose and this end here hooks right to your tool. You just pull it back, attach it this way till it clicks and let go and it will lock. This is not the best air hose and I think the way it is coiled is really quite annoying. So if you have um, an air compressor with it, get a good air hose that won't be a tangled mess every time you try to use it. All right, good. Mm -hmm. All right, let me show you how it works using this one here. Um, so let's say we were nailing this to something else. All you are going to do is press it down, keep it 90 degrees in most cases to your piece of wood. You will need to press down so that is depressed before you can push your trigger. And that's all there is to it. Now there's a little nail right there in the center. Now let's adjust our dial here and I'll just show you. So that one is sunk just below the surface. The dial on this one is here. Let's, let's do it this way and see what happens. Should make it sink in even more. And it did. And we'll go the other way real quick. No, I didn't go far enough. There we go. And it is right there sticking up above the surface. And just like that, now you know how to use a brad nailer. Again, I love this tool. I cannot say enough about it. And I can't say enough about the cordless version. It is just so easy to use to carry around wherever I need it. Um, so grab one of these for sure. If you would like to see more videos in our Power Tool series, you can check out this playlist here. And for videos in which I show you how to use this thing in action, uh, you can check out this playlist right here. All right, we will see you next time.